Chris Alexander, a former Deputy Director for Eastern Europe at the Canadian Foreign Ministry. Uh, welcome back, uh, Chris. Always a pleasure to have you on. Do you see any scope uh, for some kind of agreement or issues on where the two sides could reach an understanding? I, no, I don't. Uh, the Russian side is still playing the card of war. It's really unrestricted aggression, shelling of cities. Uh, they're staying uh, close to Kharkiv, the second city, uh, and trying to encircle Kiev. Uh, they definitely want to buy time. They definitely want to convince people that they're interested in negotiations. But I don't see any real uh, prospect of a positive result uh, coming out of Antalya. Foreign Minister Lavrov has absolutely nothing to do with central decision-making in the Kremlin. He's just along for the ride, like those Russian tourists who used to go to Antalya. Chris, there are some conflicting opinions about whether the Russians are deliberately targeting civilians. The Ukrainians are absolutely convinced they are. Um, there are about 18 medical facilities or ambulances that the World Health Organization says have been hit by Russian strikes. And we have what's just happened in Mariupol there at a children and maternity hospital. Given Russia's previous experience and its tactics in other theaters of conflict, what do you feel about the way it's going about dropping bombs? Uh, unfortunately, I, I think we have to assume that the claims, the allegations uh, that they are targeting civilians are absolutely true. Uh, we've seen the pictures from Mariupol. We've seen you know, hundreds of diplomats, uh, of journalists, I should say, on the ground in Ukraine, interviewing survivors, describing what happened. Uh, and we also know tr Russia's track record, not just from the last two weeks, but from eight years of this war in Donba Donbass and Crimea as well as the heavy uh, legacy, uh, uh, the tragic legacy of Russia's involvement in Syria, where they targeted hospitals uh, absolutely without remorse. Uh, and yes, the World Health Organization has tracked that dozen plus, uh, those dozen plus incidents of health facilities being attacked. Ukrainian figures have it as high as 60, I think even over 100, according to one count, health facilities being attacked. So this is not an accident. They are not just going after civilian targets. They are going after schools, hospitals, and residential buildings in an effort to sow panic and terror in the population. These are war crimes, and that is why the International Criminal Court has prosecutor, chief prosecutor, has moved so quickly to document these crimes and start bringing Russia to account. It's unacceptable. Uh, it's, an, it's a war of conquest against a major country. It should be of concern to us all. And Ukraine has the right to self-defense. Uh, we should be helping them defend themselves from this onslaught. Yes, but how much help, Chris? I mean, we're looking at pictures of Ukrainian citizens. So you can clearly see the horror and the fear in their faces. I mean, if you asked any of them, surely they would be quite plain in their language and say that the West is literally scared of Russia. I mean, all this confusion about fighter jets going from Poland via an American air base in Germany and then eventually to Ukraine, the lack of a no-fly zone, whatever it may be, there will be Ukrainians, probably every single one of them will be saying the West is scared of Moscow. No one in the world has done enough. Uh, Ukrainians have the right to self-defense. They're putting up an extremely brave defense. Uh, and they are, to be true, uh, to, to, to tell the truth, getting support from every NATO member country uh, and many countries beyond NATO, but they need much more. And you're right. Uh, the top leadership of our allied governments ha has not been strong enough. They have not been decisive. They have taken military options off the table when we should be putting them on the table. Uh, Ukraine has a right to call in its friends, partners, and allies uh, to support its self-defense. That is legal under the UN Charter. Uh, and there is no reason why we shouldn't be augmenting uh, Ukraine's air force, augmenting their ability to suppress fire, augmenting uh, all the weapon systems they're using effectively against Russian forces. They need more of it, and they need it fast. Uh, there are tens of thousands of foreign volunteers joining the Ukrainians. Uh, there have been tens of thousands of weapon systems shipped. So some things are happening, but it's still not enough. And as you say, there is this hesitancy uh, this indecisiveness at senior levels that really has to be dispensed with. We need a decisive uh, move to confront Vladimir Putin's uh, aggression along with Ukrainians who are bearing the brunt of the suffering. Chris, always appreciate the analysis very much indeed. Chris Alexander in Nairobi.